Ladies and gentlemen, and you know, friends and enemies, Skids Auto Podcast episode 34. Yes, and uh, we've made it this far, so let's make it consistent. Uh, I am at a dilemma, and I actually haven't prepared for this one because uh, I really am torn with uh, with what I am what I am gonna say. Um, so it's gay pride, right? And uh, I have a lot of gay friends, and I see a lot of their posts, you know, uh, concerning. You know their coming out party, uh, coming out of closet. If uh, if you're not familiar with the term, it's them finally admitting to the world that they're gay. And I see a lot of their photos. Uh, some some are posting videos, and uh, you know, especially uh, my good friend Renz. Uh, <laughs> am I allowed to say his name? But yeah. Uh, so yeah, I uh, I totally I'm I'm happy that uh, they're happy with and I uh, I, ha- I have I care for them you know uh, especially my friends I don't really care for people that I <laughs> I am not associated with or like uh, not friends with uh, whether you're a girl a boy or a, or a gay person I don't really care but if you are a friend no matter what your gender is I, I totally I am I am concerned for you, you know, uh, supportive of, of your happiness something like that but then again, uh, I am also a seminary student. I am I am a Christian, although <laughs> that's not very uh, that's not very clear. That's not very obvious, but I am. And you know how it is, uh, Christians. We we follow the Bible, of course, and biblically. Yeah, it's not, it's uh, it's not biblical to be uh, to be a gay person. You know. Uh, it's not biblical to be, you know, a, be a part of the uh, the LGBT. There's no such thing as a as a third person. Uh, no, not third person. Uh, third gender. Yeah. So it it doesn't. It's not in the Bible. So it's not biblical in a sense. And I also see some of my friends from the seminary, of course, and you know, just some people who are professing to be Christians. Uh, they do. Like some of their posts, they contain, you know, some hate towards gay people. You know, uh, they think they are an, uh, they're an abomination. Not my words, but their words. Uh, uh, they feel like they are, you know, making the world uh, not a better place. So, uh, a, worst, uh, a worse place for us. So yeah, uh, they they have their own opinions. I think it's not very Christian-like to to do something like that. Uh, as I've said before, uh, one of the one of the uh, you know the the greatest commandment is uh, love the Lord your God, uh, uh, etc. And then the second greatest commandment is love your neighbor. And so, uh, no matter what the gender is, uh, girl, boy, or uh, or gay, uh, they're they're, they're your neighbors they are uh, they're humans and you have to love them as you would love yourself and so saying awful and hateful things towards these people uh, you know the the gay people then uh, that's you are you are kind of uh, what do you call this not following the the commandment that uh, that God gave us and so, uh, yeah, basically, this is just a struggle uh, that I have. So I am, I am struggling. So I have no particular point. Basically, I just wanted to share uh, this particular uh, struggle of mine. Uh, if, if if the title uh, confuses you, I'm sorry. That's not clickbait. I really am like caught in the middle, where I have some friends who I do not want to offend, uh, and I do also have friends who are who are who are kind of uh, in an in an attack mode towards the uh, to do the other party and uh, I don't know where to uh, place myself in uh, that kind of situation I uh, I mean how if you have if you're someone who has a a gay friend and also uh, exercise Christian uh, values what do you do uh, in particular, or how do you tackle uh, this certain dilemma? Um, if 
uh, me uh, for for all these time I, I've just been very neutral with with uh, with everything you know uh, even to even to Christian people I am uh, I am awful <laughs> I am awful on both sides so I guess uh, I am I am I am impartial <laughs> uh, but yeah I mean uh, I guess uh, to to put out some some very specific uh, you know like talking points I guess some of some of the things where both like the concern about gay gay people uh, like saying Christianity is is stupid or saying that it's uh, it's something that that's not supposed to be believed in because it it contradicts their own beliefs is something that uh, I I uh, I wouldn't be uh, on board with uh, and uh, the same thing goes to to Christians I guess uh, I mean we we do we do share uh, the gospel it's a it's a commandment it's a particular commandment and uh, so if it's a commandment you have to you have to do it but uh, <coughs> sharing mind you is different from imposing right so Christians uh, if you're a Christian and you're you're listening uh, you know uh, just share the gospel that's uh, that's the uh, that's the commandment and uh, please do not uh, impose your your beliefs to to other people because most of the time what it does is you know it creates animosity between uh, both parties so instead of winning uh, the person that you'd like to share with uh, you end up arguing with each other and uh, you no longer uh, win win the person so what you acquired is is you know an enemy some something like that instead of having having a friend or having someone who you can have a discussion with I, I'm probably not the only one who's a who's a, who has that struggle uh, but but to be fair you know I most of the uh, most I mean it's it's just me all right it's just me uh, I cannot speak for everyone else uh, but uh, most of the time uh, my gay friends are <laughs> are nicer people <laughs> compared to uh, compared to my uh, Christian friends <laughs> I mean granted they're they're trying to uh, hit on me <laughs> sometimes <laughs> Uh, but overall, you know, they're uh, they're pretty nice people. Uh, our interactions has has always been fun. You know, they're uh, you, you have to admit, gay people are are, are funny. They they really know how to lighten up the mood, and uh, most of the time, Christians are are uptight. I'm not I'm not hating on you, uh, Christian folks. Uh, this is probably one of the reasons why I <laughs> I don't go to church. But yeah, uh, so. Uh, Christians are, are uptight and sometimes they are easily offended and yeah uh, it's true that you guys sometimes always try to impose uh, your beliefs on uh, uh, on other people I mean it, it's not only Christian to uh, an unbeliever sometimes it's Christian to Christian sometimes they they'll say uh, awful things about uh, another Christian's beliefs or like how they dress inside the church you know, so these are things that uh, that are like petty uh, arguments, and I, I know this firsthand because again, I, I I came from the seminary. I'm a graduate, and I see firsthand like uh, what the churches are going through. There are churches who split. There are churches who who's like destroying the other church because they want the members. Like they're they're trying to get uh, the same members, so they're trying to destroy the other church so that the the member will go to their church. So uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of things that's going on inside uh, the church that maybe not a lot of people are, are aware of, but I am aware. And uh, uh, I mean, a lot of people are, are are turned off with this. I'm not I'm not generalizing. Not all churches are like this, but some. Uh, I mean, I guess it just uh, comes to 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 the people. I mean, uh, we are individuals at the end of the day, but. Just saying, from my experience and uh, me as an individual, when it comes to my friends, uh, you know, I'm just saying, uh, I, I, I have more fun with uh, with uh, with my gay friends, with my unbeliever friends, 
compared to the Christian ones. So, not to throw shade on the Christians. Uh, <laughs> this is not in general. So there, there, there are people who are nice who are, who are Christians. I just don't know them. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, that's all I have to say on that matter. Um, and uh, just to piggyback on uh, last, yeah, last episode's uh, topic. I talked a little about, well not a little, that's kind of like the main topic that I had. But, uh, I'm talking about the Meralgo uh, situation. Okay, so I haven't, re I, have, I, I haven't paid, but I, my, my electric bill, uh, my electric line obviously isn't cut yet. So uh, maybe there's still a chance that they're gonna roll back the, uh, the bill that we all have because we all are affected. Uh, oh, by the way, uh, I asked my friend who is in Cebu right now. And so if you're not aware, Cebu does not have Miralco, they have Veco. So it's a different uh, electric company that, uh, uh, than, than Miralco. So they have Veco, we have Miralco. So I asked him uh, about uh, the bill that they have from uh, from May to June and they said that uh, their bill is higher of course because uh, they've been in the house all day but it's not even double you know it's just like a, like a 1 1.5 increase something like that so yeah so I guess it's only it's only Meralco who uh, did this thing to uh, their customers so uh, there you go and I'd like to read this uh, what do you call this? This, this statement from uh, from a certain someone, right? Uh, he's a uh, he's pretty famous as of the moment. Uh, he's named uh, Carlo Catigbac, yeah. And uh, I'm gonna read uh, this state this statement that I found online. And the reason why I'm reading this to you is because I find it really, you know, uh, I don't know. It's it's compelling, yeah. It's uh. It's something that struck my heart, <laughs> something like that. But yeah, so this is him, uh, Carlo Catigbac. If you don't know him, he's the president and CEO of uh, ABS-CBN Incorporation. No, 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 Incor no, Corporation, right? And then uh, he has like, he's the one you know, fighting for ABS-CBN in, uh, in the hearings that they have, you know, uh, about the shutdown of ABS-CBN. So uh, this is uh, one of uh, his statements and I'll read it to you and I quote, Tagalog to, <laughs> hirap na hirap po ang mga empleyado namin. So he's referring to the employees ng ABS-CBN. Unang-una, sa panahon po ng pandemia, mahirap talaga makahanap ng bagong trabaho. If you are retrenched and laid off, you will have to deal with uncertainty of not knowing how you'll continue to, pro to provide for your family. Most of our employees are going through this right now and I wish we could give them the assurance that everything will be okay. But that power rests with Congress. Uh, first of all, this is a uh, paawa effect, if you're not aware of that. That's like a sob story. So he's using the, uh, you know, parang... Essentially, he's saying, Uy, maawa naman kayo, dami namin empleyado. Uh, na layoff sila na yung uh, pandemic we have nothing to do and uh, we want we, we want it to be good for them but we can't it rests in the congress so and he's implying that uh, what they can do to be okay for them is to uh, open up ABS-CBN again so basically that's what uh, they're implying and uh, I I kind of uh, I kind of feel for the guy, you know, uh, I, uh, I I am touched. Uh, this this uh, statement in particular has reached out to my heart, and I'd like to say this to Carlo Katigbak. And uh, if you're listening, which I I'm most certainly you're not, but if you are listening, I'd like to say this to you. Putang <laughs> inamo. Yeah, because uh, if you don't know. Uh, <laughs> Carlo, 
yung boss mo si uh, yung mga yung Lopez group uh, uh, they also uh, own Meralco and what they're doing basically is yung same people na sinasabi mo yung mga empleyado ng ABS-CBN na nahirap na hirap uh, sabi mo nga eh, they are the same people na ang ginagawa ng boss mo they are they are making them pay more than the usual not only more than not, it's not even more than the usual it's way more than the usual it's five times it's seven times it it's ten times their usual bill hirap na hirap na yung empleyado niya di ba but still your boss they are making them pay and it's it's not even justifiable these things that they're doing is is uh, what do you call this it's unethical and they are making fraudulent fraudulent information or like readings to make them pay more and in effect get more money because uh, they lost a huge business which, which is ABS-CBN due to their shutdown you saying these things you know the sob story you have to realize that it's your own kind it's your boss it's whoever you are working for you you are also doing these things to your to your own employees you wanna you wanna make it good for your employees well uh, it's ironic because you are also doing bad things to your uh, you, to your own employees maybe not directly I get that uh, you are not directly uh, making making it bad for your employees but it's <laughs> It's your, what do you call that? Sister company? Something like that? It's like you lured someone to help you. And then when they helped you, people are going, Oi, press freedom. Oi, laban ka pamilya. And then what happens? Uh, Meralco bites them in the ass. And we are helpless. The Filipino people is, is helpless. Not, not Filipino people, but the, the people in Metro Manila are helpless because they don't have any other option. Uh, it's it's unfair to those. I am not one of those people who are who is supporting ABS-CBN, but it's kind of unfair to those pe to those people who are supporting ABS-CBN, trying to get you get uh, trying to get you guys back on air, but then your sister company is making them pay for whatever they lost uh, because of the business of ABS-CBN. It's kind of bullshit. It's uh, it's unethical, and uh, it's a, it's a dick move, to uh, to put it simply. So yeah, uh, Carlo Katigbak, uh, you have to look at yourself in the mirror. Are you, are you doing like, is this really what you what you want to do? Uh, you are, you are backing up or you're defending the Lopez Group, which is a uh, full of shit organization. Uh, is that what you really want? Uh, I'm sure you are aware. I mean, you are probably one of those people who. Who uh, who uses electricity, and at the end of the day, you will have a bill from Miralco. And so, if you are not aware of these things, well, you have to be aware. Even using the the sob story, it's it's uh, it's kind of funny, you know. So fuck you. <laughs> yeah, uh, I've said a lot of hateful things, and I guess that's uh, that's how I would like to uh, end this particular episode. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for uh, for listening and uh, again maybe I should not say my name after that but yeah I'm Miguel this is Kids Soda Podcast thank you for listening I hope you enjoy that one even though I am uh, I, I am full of uh, hateful things at the end but yeah uh, thank you and um, have a great night